Let's go exploring Isla with the Brooklady Port Charlotte. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. My name is Matt, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Brooklady Port Charlotte MC01. Now this is one of their uh, cask exploration series. It's actually uh, one of their earlier cask exploration series releases. And I wanted to tackle this whiskey because uh, well, we're going exploring. We're, we're going to Isla. Uh, we're about to head out on a trip and I wanted to film another video just so I had something else I could put out there for you guys to watch while I'm gone. And so what's better than something called the Exploration Series? That's great. So uh, the MC01. The MC01 uh, was distilled in 2009. It was released in 2018. It's nine-year-old Port Charlotte. It's bottled at, I believe, cask strength of 56.3%, typical Brooklady style, non-chill filtered, natural color. Uh, the thing about this one is, is it was originally in uh, American oak and French oak casks, but then it was uh, transferred over and finished in uh, Marsala uh, wine casks. So that's a Sicilian fortified wine, uh, which is really interesting because I don't believe outside of this whiskey I've ever had uh, Marsala cask finished or matured uh, single malt whiskey. So that that's really cool. Now this exploration series, cask exploration series, is a really interesting one from Port Charlotte um, because they've, they've done uh, cognac. The cognac might have actually been before the series was official, but they've done cognac. They've done a bunch of Bordeaux uh, red wines. Uh, recently they did uh, Sauternes. Uh, really, the, 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 there's a whole bunch of different releases. The MRC01, PAC01, OLCO01. SC01, is anyone following at this point? Probably not. But we're here to talk about the MC01. So you've already got the vital stats there, the age, uh, all that. The other thing to, to know about this one too, is this was actually originally a travel retail release, which is really interesting because I did not have to travel to get this whiskey. Um, the story I received was that uh, somehow this whiskey uh, was supposed to be the MRC01. And it was sent to the whiskey stores in Calgary, Alberta. Um, and when they opened up the boxes, they realized they didn't receive the MRC01. What they received was the MC01. And they didn't really have a way of sending it back. So they just held on to it. So they weren't duty free. They, they weren't uh, travel retail sections, but they were able to sell these travel retail releases uh, to the general public, uh, which is pretty cool. So that's how I came by it. And um, yeah, I think that's where we'll, we'll end that and we'll get right into the nose and uh, palette and finish. Okay, so. Oh man, I never get tired of nosing whiskey like this. Big, bold, jammy and oh, savory. Something about like something like fruity and savory. And smoky is just so, so enjoyable. I, that, that's why something like uh, Ardbeg Oogdal is so popular in my mind. Like this, we all, we all, anyone who watching this video is very familiar, I think, with the, the sweet peat combination and just how good that is. So sweet peat, um, but it, again, it's not the typical Highland um, sorry, not the typical Isla peat, uh, because they're not using, um, Isla peat, they're using Highland peat. But oddly enough, it's aged. The casks are aged on Isla, unlike some other distilleries on Isla. So, I mean, whiskey to is, is a very debatable topic. Some sweet and sour notes for sure, which makes sense to me given the finishing. But there's a good amount of spice there too, and I'm wondering if the spice is from uh, the wine cask or if it's from the French oak. Yeah. But berries, tobacco, orange peel. But it's more of a, like an ashy peat style as opposed to like a, a coastal peat. There's like this, whenever I go with like Highland peat uh, that's been paired up with like a, a big red wine or fortified wine, it always seems to give me like a, like a, a mesquite hickory barbecue sort of note. Yeah, I wouldn't go towards like maple smoked bacon or something like that, like that I get out of the Laphroaig 10 Sherry Oak or the uh, Karchus PX, but 
It's definitely still barbecue notes. There's like a red Twizzlers note in there too. The, the, the wine presence is very evident. Um, there are some like Venice, um, like, yeah, features to it as well. Yeah, if you don't like um, wine finished whiskeys, wine ski, this, this isn't going to be for you, I don't think. If you're all about that ex bourbon cask or refill sherry cask, which I mean is still wine, but I digress. All right, to the palate. Hmm. My palate's better than I remember it being. And maybe it's just the excitement, the, the pre-trip excitement. Maybe I'm just jiving with the exploration, the cask exploration series right now. Because I want to dive into some casks myself, but... Hmm. Sweet red fruits. On the finish right now, leather, bonfire smoke. Sweet peat finish, some richness, very Moorish finish that makes me want to take another sip. Good. Yeah, like a Swedish berry sort of note again too. Had some of those earlier today, so that's fresh in my mind. Clean campfire, ashy peat. Some pepper and spicing. Touch of like a uh, earthiness, maybe a little bit of metallic note as well. But overall, just just really, really nice. Um, a bit of like a, a smoked meats, except for the smoked meats are like in a saucepan being fried up with uh, some red wine. Um, yeah, bit of a ridiculous thing, but that's the image. That's the image it's bringing up for me. I, I do usually find that um, taking smaller sips is just so helpful when you're tasting things. Big gulps just never, never jive with me too much. front of the palate is just is, is nicely rounded um not sharp at all if there's any part where you, you pick up some of the heat of the 56.3 percent um it's in the mid palate mid palate on the sides of your tongue but that's also bringing with it all, all that lovely um spice all that spicing um like chili oil and a little bit of like eucalyptus um sort of thing so i'm all for it i'm all for it this is really pleasant drinking whiskey. And this is almost as old as the Port Charlotte 10, uh, except for it's got a really cool cask finish on it and it's got uh, the higher ABV. Um, yeah. Um, thinking about the finish right now, again, that smoke. Interestingly enough, it's a touch drying uh, on, on on the back end here. Like uh, my, my, my tongue is a bit dry, which just wants me to take another sip again. Um, there was some pepper and like, charred oak and I always pick up like leathery tones when we're talking sweet peat um, or just what I'm perceiving to be leather um, in my whiskey leather whiskey yeah okay we'll explore that another day but really enjoyable whiskey the one thing I would say is some sometimes on the palate and I've picked this up um, previous times drinking this um, I sometimes picked up a slight sulfury struck match sort of note I'm not getting that here tonight but I know from my experience with this whiskey, because I've had a number of glasses out of this bottle, um, that that it, it does come up. Um, so if you're sensitive to sulfur, uh, you probably want to be aware of that. Now, this isn't my favorite of the cast exploration series uh, from uh, Brooklady. It's it's actually probably not even my second second favorite. Um, but it is still a really good whiskey that I'm happy to have and. Um, I'll get to a score and then I'll tell you what I think was better and why I may have screwed up. So the score for this, um, I paid about $130, $135 Canadian for it, which is a great price. Um, maybe it 
accidentally falling out of travel retail into a retail space maybe helped with that. Um, it was fairly priced, so the price doesn't really uh, impact the score at all. I'm going to give this 87 points out of 100. It's really enjoyable. If someone offered me another bottle of this at 130, 135 bucks, I'd probably pick it up. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it. I mean, does Brook Laddie really screw up any of their Port Charlotte releases? I haven't come across one that I don't enjoy. I enjoy the Isla Barley series. I enjoy the uh, the Cask Exploration series. The Port Charlotte 10 is, is just such a solid standard. But if we're talking about the Cask Exploration series, um, I had an opportunity, I had to pick between this bottle, the MC01, and the MRC01. And after I tried side-by-side -side samples of the two uh, about a year ago, I realized that that um, MRC01 Port Charlotte Cask Exploration series bottling was just dynamite. That is a good whiskey. So if you see the MRC01, that's one to snatch up. That's probably my favorite of the Cask Exploration series. It was the same price. My logic at that time was, well, this is the travel retail. This is probably harder to get. So I got this. I didn't have money to pick up both. And when I went back to, to pick up the other bottle, the MRC01, it was already sold out and I was out of luck. Um, so that's my sad, sad, sad story about the MRC01. But if you see it, um, yeah, the MRC is just phenomenal. The other one I really enjoyed, and I, I did pick up a bottle this year, and you could probably still pick up a bottle of, is the Sauternes cask. Because I don't think the Sauternes cask actually was overbearing on the distillate. And if you want to hear more about the Sauternes cask, uh, Port Charlotte cask exploration series, I did a Brook Laddie 2022 core range uh, videos, two part, one unpeated, one peated. That whiskey is in the peated video. Uh, so if you want some tasty notes and thoughts, you can find those there. Guys, um, my question for you today is going to be, have you had any of the Port Charlotte Casper exploration series or any any Port Charlotte? Um, let me know in the comments if you get along with this or if it doesn't feel like Isla peated whiskey to you. I've heard uh, some people say, hey, they're not using Isla peat. I don't consider it a true Isla whiskey. I think it's as much of an Isla whiskey as any. It's distilled there and it's aged there, but um, I'm open to hearing other people's thoughts. So let me know what you think about Port Charlotte. Thank you for joining me once again. You could go ahead and share, like, subscribe, all those YouTube things as always. Uh, I really appreciate it. And come back for more in the future from the West Coast. Until next time, slunge.